Hey everyone, welcome back. In this ISTQB foundation exam question and answers, I'll cover another five questions and explain in detail how you are going to answer the ISTQB exam questions. So question number 11 is about which of the following is not. So make sure that whenever you are reading the question, read it properly where it says not and where it says is, right? So here it clearly says is not an example of shift left approach. Okay, not an example of shift left approach. So let's go to the option and we have to select only one option, right? So reviewing the user requirements before they are formally accepted by stakeholders, writing a component test before the corresponding code is written, executing a performance efficiency test for a component during component testing and writing a test script before setting up the configuration management process. Okay, so when we say shift left approach, shift left test, uh, shift left left approach or testing is all about now when you have these phases or the testing phases or the involvement of testing shift left is more moving towards the left wherein we say more towards involvement of the testers in from the requirement right from the beginning phase of the development activities or even from the requirement activities right so if we to take a look at the first option when we say shift left reviewing the user requir requirement before they are formally accepted by stakeholders this is absolutely it is a must for the shift left approach so this is not the correct answer because we have to, to choose not an example of the shift left right so this is a shift left approach this is an example of shift left approach approach writing a component test before component before corresponding code is written is also you are as a tester you are going well ahead going through the requirement and writing the component test before so again shift left example then executing a performance efficiency test for a component during component testing right so you are doing performance testing at a component level not waiting until the end this is also a shift left example right so shift left all three are there so these three are no they, these are not the correct answer because all three are the examples of shift left testing writing a test script before setting up the configuration management process right so this is the correct answer now because we have all anyways excluded three that means only d is left and if you read it before setting up the configuration management process you start writing this test script where will you basically put those scripts what will be the version versioning system right so that doesn't make sense if you start doing that before the configuration management process is up that is not not an example of shift left approach so this is the correct answer so for 11 d is the correct answer okay now moving to the question number 12 which of the arguments below would you use to convince your manager to organize retrospectives at the end of each release cycle retrospectives right so agile retrospective and if you have already gone through some of my agile trainings you will understand retrospectives in detail when they are conducted right so retrospectives uh, organizing retrospective end of the release cycle how you are going to convince so let's see the options here and we have to select the one option here so retrospectives are popular these these days and clients would appreciate if we added them to our process no right does it just because they are popular and client would appreciate we don't do things like that right so this is absolutely wrong answer okay just because some process is popular something is popular something is a buzzword you don't start straight away going ahead and implementing unless and until you see the value right so that's how you can eradicate the or eliminate these answers so first one is gone wrong organizing retrospectives will save organization the organization money because without them end user representatives do not provide immediate feedback about the product that's also not correct the purpose of retrospective is not to save save the organization money it because end user representative do not provide immediate feedback about the product so that's not correct because end user representatives provide feedback there are different ways not the retrospective so this is also incorrect process weaknesses identified during the retrospective can be analyzed and serve as a to-do list for the organization's continuous improve process improvement program right this looks correct process weakness identified during the retrospective right 
right? So the purpose of retrospective is that after the iteration release, the team comes together, they discuss and welcome thoughts from everyone within the team. What went well, basically, what didn't went well, what are the, what are some of the challenges that team faced, right? And what can be improved? So that's where the process weaknesses get identified during this meeting and team creates a to-do list that okay from next iteration onwards from next release onwards we'll do these things or we'll try to improve on these so c is the correct option let's go to the d1 as well retrospectives embrace five values including courage and respect no that's not correct these are the extreme programming values okay so this is also incorrect so c is the correct option for question number 12 okay now moving to the question number 13 which type of failures one to four fit which test levels a to d best okay so you'll see there are there are one to four failure and then there is a different test level component component integration system and acceptance these four test levels now we have to map each of these failures with a particular test level best fit we have to do and then we have to choose one option little tricky but then if we get just one correct okay and map it then we will start eliminating some of these options from here okay so let's go one by one so failures in system System behavior as it de deviates from the user's business need right so users business need that means mostly the acceptance right so mostly acceptance deviation from the user's business need system behavior deviation from users business need so most this this is more of a user perspective or basically at the acceptance level right so this looks like one is more correlatable to D but let's go further and see failure in communication between components communication between components okay so when we say communication between components so this is basically two components communicating and any two components communicating or in between uh, the integration is what it's basically component integration right so that's com absolutely sure that for two okay so for two this is basically two will be B okay so component integration because you will see between components communication between components clear okay so for for sure I'm 100% sure that this is correct and this is how you are going to do you find one and you make sure okay this is 100% correct I know they know it now let's start with the elimination strategy so you know to B right so to B you know 100% sure so that means this C is already eliminated okay because to B is not there so now you have options A B and D and you have to figure out which one to choose or which which one is the correct let's go to the third one failures in logic in a module now logic in a module okay within a module so this is more of a unit a component okay so logic in a module is again a component so three right so three is mapping to a so now let's see with the elimination strategy where exactly we have three and a so three and a is at option a and then three at a is option d okay so that means b is also gone right so b is also gone so now between a and d we have to we know that there is one correct answer between a and d let's go to the fourth one failures are not correctly implemented fail failures in not correctly implemented business rules okay so here you will see business rules okay and then here users business needs which is more of an acceptance all right so users business need is more of an acceptance and this is business rule implemented business rule rule which is more of a system testing right so four will map to more of system so four c okay let's see where exactly we have this four c so four c is here so and then here they are saying 4d which is not correct so a is the correct answer so one is more from users business needs so one is acceptance 1d 2b 3a and 4 is c so a is the correct answer a is the correct answer for this particular question number 13 that's how you are going to basically figure it out okay moving to question number 14 you are uh, testing a user story with three acceptance criteria ac1 ac2 and ac3 ac1 is covered by test case 1 ac2 by is uh, test case 2 ac3 by test case 3 the test execution history has three test runs on three consecutive 
the dev versions of the software okay so you'll see that test cases and then three versions of the software for example in version one of the deployment you executed these three test cases two of them failed one passed then you see the second execution when de de developers then you raise the defect developers fix those and they deployed again and you you were asked to do second round of execution then again some failed some passed again new deployment and then all of them you see pass here right in execution three so tests are repeated once you are informed that all defects found in the test run are corrected and new version of the software is available and that's how you executed three executions which of the above tests are executed as regression tests now here you have to understand what exactly regression test is right so confirmation or retesting and regression testing we have to understand that so when we say confirmation testing so if a test case failed all right and you are re-executing that particular test in the new release that is not a regression test that is a retest however if you are executing if if the test case already passed okay and then in the next phase you are also executing that particular test that is regression test so if we talk about which of the above test cases are executed at regression as regression test so here this one number four execution is retest right because this was failed here you got a fix and you are re-executing that means it's a retest so this is not a regression test so four is not a regression okay one two three anyways are the first execution that you have done okay so they are out of the question out of four five six seven eight nine we have to mention which ones are the regression okay so here this was passed and you are executing this fifth execution again that means this is regression this one was failed so that is retest so out in execution two which one is the regression five is the regression okay and similarly in the third execution if we see four was passed but you have again in third execution executed the same test cases tc1 so this seventh is a regression however five and six failed tc2 and three again failed in execution two you have re-executed those that means that's these two are retest or confirmation test okay so you are confirming whether the in the new deployment in the new fix that the developers have deployed whether these are working or not right so these are confirmation or retest but seven is the regression test so only five and seven are regression test so answer is b here only five and seven rest all you can discard okay so that's how you have to figure figure these questions out okay so b is the correct answer for question number 14 moving on to the question number 15 which of the following is not a benefit of static testing not a benefit of static testing right so let's see having less expensive okay so let's see the op option here having less expensive defect management due to ease of detecting defects later in the sdlc okay this looks little uh odd out here okay but let's go ahead and read the others fixing defects found during static testing is generally much less expensive than fixing defects defects found during dynamic testing this is absolutely valid point for static test testing right so this is a benefit of static testing so this is out right here we are figuring out the not not a benefit okay finding coding defects that might not have been found by only performing dynamic testing this is also a benefit of static testing so this option is also out because this is a benefit this is we are looking for not a benefit but this is a benefit detecting gaps and inconsistencies in requirement is also a benefit of static testing so that is also out right so whichever the first option that i had doubt is the correct answer there having less expensive defect management less expensive defect management no defect management is always will cost you know similar uh, expense it doesn't matter you know you have whether the benefit of static static testing are there or not so less expensive defect management is not the case here due to ease of detecting defects later in the sdlc no that's that's absolutely not a benefit so a is the correct answer for 15 okay so these are another five questions that i covered in this particular video along with the explanations and how you are going to attempt istqb foundation exam and more or less similar complexity will get in the exam so the way we are using the elimination strategy reading out all the options and going ahead with the with figuring out the correct answer try to apply that go through these videos in detail and that is going to definitely help you in the examination and passing the istqb foundation exam so that's all for this video see you in the next lecture with another five questions thank you see you in the next one